All right, this is how to set up a wing if you're a quad guy. Um, I've had a few guys that I know in person and a couple guys online say they want to get into wings. And uh, there's a little more to it than just saying go buy this, put a battery in it, and go. Um, I started flying the wings in August of 2017 end of last year basically I think I've got one two three four five about about a half dozen um, fixed wing things I got now so um, <clears throat> I ain't an expert but I, I can I got a couple to fly um, I'm gonna put little title screens in between the different areas so that way there you guys can Fast forward ahead if you already watched it and you just want to skip to a certain part. There'll be little little breakups in the video, so you don't have to listen to my dumbass blabber on for however long this video lasts. Um, say my usual thing. I normally just post mediocre flying to snappy tunes, so bear with me. So uh, let's get started. All right, props. That is the most important thing, just kidding, it's not, but it does what pushes you forward. Um, biggest mistake people make, and the one I made, is that normally, I mean, this, this is a quad motor, basically. It's an 1806-2400kV motor. Um, you would take a prop from a regular quad, say this one, and you want to put the writing on the top. Um, but if you do that, with this type of motor, the prop's actually upside down. So it may blow air, but it's not going to do it very efficiently. So what you need to do is take the prop, flip it so the lettering is facing towards the um, direction, direction of travel. So it's going into it. If you do it the other way, even if it's blowing air, it's not going not to get you anywhere. Uh, the other thing with props... Uh, quad props, especially the triples, like we're used to using, don't use those on wings. They're dropping shit. They're really inefficient. Um, the benefits you get from a tri a tri prop, you won't see on a airplane because they. I mean, tri props, you know, give you the better uh, stability and they cut better and this, that, and the other thing. This is just pushing. So. I mean, you're going forward with it, and that's that's all you need to worry about. Um, uh, if you can avoid it, if you don't have any uh, bi props um, that aren't quad props, these APC props are the ones I've been using. I don't know if they're the best, but they seem like they're pretty good. It's the one I got on this, and this one does pretty well. It calls for like a 5-4 um, uh, quad prop is what it's calling for, but um, like I said, this is a when I say this was 4.7 by 4.2, and it it'll it'll run it all freaking day. I mean, you just launch it, go full throttle, and then three minutes later, when the battery starts dying, you land it. I mean, it's it's the way to go. But um, aside from that, that should just about cover propellers. All right, CG or center of gravity. Um, basically, what that is is the balance of the airframe when it's fully loaded. That's with a battery or a and or a um, action camera, which you wouldn't run a big camera like this on a little wing like this, but you get the picture. Um, what you want to do is most companies when you buy a wing. They'll give you, sorry, bump the camera. They'll give you, um, they'll either mark it. Sometimes it's just two little nipples sticking out of the um, sticking out of the foam, or they'll give you a measurement. Sometimes they'll do both, which is nice. Um, and then you just measure from the tip back. I think this one is actually five and a half inches. It's different for every every wing, um, but it is the most important part of setting up a wing because um, two tail heavy. It's going to be real pitchy, and every time you give it a little bit of gas, it's going to want to go up. The controls are going to be real loosey-goosey. It's going to fly like total shit, and if you get it on the ground without crashing it, you're lucky. Um, too nose-heavy, um, 
generally what will happen when you're too nose heavy is you give it gas and it'll want to it'll want to pitch down um, it'll feel real sluggish flying through the air and it'll just constantly have this tendency to want to push its nose into the ground um, that's actually recoverable I mean if it's if you got enough throws you could actually overcome it and get it on the ground and then adjust it but normally what you want to do is you take the take the um, uh, wing put your battery in it action camera if you're flying with an action camera set it all up put your fingers on the um, CG points and it's better if you do this indoors because if you do it do it outside and the winds blowing the wind will kind of kick you around it's kind of hard to tell but um, first time you set it up like you got it all built and you're ready to ready to take it out to the field this is usually the best time to mark your CG <clears throat> and then um, hold it in your hand with your fingers on the points like this but upside down um, you'll feel the it'll kind of kick back or it'll kind of kick forward if it's kicking back add weight here if it's kicking forward add weight here and just kind of get it back and forth until you get it just there I usually like to I'll put it on the CG and then once it feels right I'll kind of roll my finger back and forth and it should go in the opposite direction as you're rolling it uh, when in doubt add more nose weight again nose weight you can recover from uh, too much tail weight you're screwed um, that's it uh, for this one the um, this particular one for instance uh, it suggested uh, the suggested camera that's supposed to come with it is actually a um, and I'm out of frame here is actually a um, camera that uh, Hobby King sells with a heat sink on it's the same thing but it's just got a heat sink on it so it's a little bit heavier so what I'm getting at and um, <clears throat> I had to actually add an ounce half an ounce here and a half an ounce here of um, extra weight on the nose to get it to get it the balance right um, when um, if it flies right with this weight being set up the way it is, I'm going to actually look for bigger batteries. If you got if you got the option to, um, and you're and you're putting ballast into the the aircraft to get it to balance right on the nose where the battery is, um, if you got the option, it's better to <coughs> add add battery weight than add just ballast because ballast is wasted weight if you're going to if you're going to add weight to it you might as well add something useful like battery weight so you could fly a little longer or faster or what have you but um i think that's just about it for cg reflex reflex is kind of kind of one of those jfm type things um not really but it kind of is there's no there's no set um, formula for it as far as it goes setting reflex uh, it is important because your reflex keeps your wing from doing this from this jobbing and doing the the old the old roll swing as they like to do um, basically what it does is it replaces the tail of a traditional airplane because this obviously doesn't have a tail it's just a flying wing by itself a um, more traditional airplane like this old turd that I got kicking around you're flying through the air your wings give you lift your tail gives you drag so you got drag on the back here it's flying this way it's gonna fly straight just like flights on a dart um, with a wing you don't have a tail so you need to um, introduce drag on the trailing edge of the airfoil and how you do that is you add reflex which uh, you get a you get a pen and paper Reflex, here's your standardized airfoil here, yada yada, teardrop shape. That's your wing cross section there. And you got your reflex. Uh, kicking up like that. Now, this, this is exaggerated, you, don't, you never want that much reflex, but just so you know which, which, what I'm looking at here. So you got the nose of the airplane, with the weight pulling down like this and then you got the air coming over to the airfoil like this giving you your lift hitting this guy right here which makes the plane want to go up like this that's drag on the trailing edge and that's what keeps you straight uh, a lot of the times when you have a wing that doesn't have enough reflex in it you'll get that that uh, yaw instability on it kind of kicking back and forth and that 
that almost looks like a yellow wobble. Um, if you get that, sometimes if you put a little bit more reflex in it, I found personally that that'll actually um, alleviate that. I mean, you can't get rid of it. It's just, it's the nature of a flying wing for it to have that yaw coupling or yaw, whatever the hell it is, um, sway to it. And uh, like I said, you, some, some you can't get rid of it. I mean, sometimes it's actually the environment will actually cause it. And um, not much you could do to get rid of it totally, but that sometimes that alleviates it. I have noticed that a symmetrical airfoil, which would be an airfoil, more teardrop shape again this is exaggerated for for uh which we call it uh, so suck it drawing too um symmetrical wig uh, airfoils have less of a, they need less reflex i don't know why just something that i've noticed this would be a, a non-symmetrical airfoil because it's got the flat bottom kind of like this one does you can see it's it's flat on the bottom and then you got the traditional airfoil on the top <coughs> the um, excuse me the uh, uh, symmetrical airfoil I found is more high performance I guess you would say they seem to fly faster they cut through the air a little bit better they turn a little bit better they fly inverted a lot better they roll a lot faster they flip a lot faster the whole nine yards it just seemed to be better um, not that not that this style isn't good but like I said if I if I had to say one was better it would be this style um, that's about it. To set it, uh, generally, a rule of thumb that I've found, like I said, I could be wrong, but it's worked for me. Uh, you want to do about a quarter inch, a quarter inch of up, up trim. And you do this, you got your servos, we'll get to that later, but you got your servos neutralized. You're sitting there and you got it in there, but this is loose, so it's flipping up and down. You want to come in here like this. And then you got your servo, of course, it's loose. It's not, it's not fastened yet. That would be your neutral point, and then you just kind of want to kick it up a little bit, and then tighten down your servo horn, and that gives you that gives you the reflex you're going to need. Um, like I said, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch, quarter inch, a little more, a little more is better. You know what I mean? Um, also, when you when you do it like this, you come over here, measure it, and then of course you want to flip it over to the other side. And do the same again onto the other side. This one actually, this little thing I got at Har Harbor Freight, and you could actually measure it, lock it in, and then go to the other side, and you get it perfect. It's not ever going to be perfect out of the bench. I mean, out of the bag once you fly it, but you get it close, and then you could actually, you know, if it starts, feels like it's pulling up too much, but not tail heavy pulling up, but pulling up just because it's getting an input. You kind of just dial in a little bit of. A little bit of trim as you're flying and get it to level out and then you bring it down and then you actually look at it when you get it on the ground and see where it's at and that kind of gives you an idea where it's supposed to be um, that's about it for reflex all right BECs better known as or other known as battery eliminating circuits um, us quad guys, we don't know too much about that because we don't get our 5 volts from our um, ESCs. We get the 5 volts usually from a PDB or the um, the actual flight controller. Um, this is one thing you need to note if you're going to use a um, quad ESC, you're going to need to buy a BEC. And you can find those ready-made RC, get FPV, any place that sells airplanes will get them. Uh, normally for a wing this size with these two little servos running this little teeny tiny camera, uh, two amp will do you all day. Um, something bigger, you're talking like, nine, like, a, like a 900 millimeter, um, running a little bit more fancy stuff in it, five amps, three amps, I mean, you want to, you want I mean, more is better of course so I mean <clears throat> but like I said for something this small two amps something bigger they sell five amps and I mean they go they go way up there I mean the helicopter guys use use insane BECs for to run their servos but um yeah just to note like I said I, I know a lot of guys want to use old used quad parts for their um for their wing builds and uh you'll actually you need to you need to note that this one which is the older version of this I actually used a um, an old Afro uh, ESC which had a two amp back in it, so, so it works out pretty good. I, I could fly for about four minutes with this old one, 
no problem. It doesn't overheat and it keeps this. I actually did an amp test with everything in it, um, servos and the camera running and of course the speed controller powered up with the receiver and you pull about uh, two tenths of an amp. So you got you got a lot to go there with a two amp with a two amp BEC. But um, as far as that goes, that they sell again external ones. The external ones are better because you're actually separating the two. If you use an internal one and your your ESC fails, you lose all your control. Um, if you have an external one, you still you still have your five volts, so you can still fly the damn thing while while you're crashed towards the ground. But uh, that's about it for Max. All right, servos and servo horns. Um, horns, let's start off with the horns because that's that's pretty cut and dry. Uh, basically, with a servo horn, connects your servo to your um, elevon or your control surface. And uh, basically, you got, they, they make them in um, carbon fiber. This is, I think this is some kind of phenolic uh, material. Um, but basically they're all the same. It's just a triangle braced type deal with some type of pivot in it and it moves up and down. The one thing you need to watch with servo horns is um, you can't really see it too well. Let me see if I can see it on the camera. Uh, right here you see the the actual pivot for the servo horn. That needs in the neutral position so when it's laying flat like that that needs to be in the center of that crease. If it's see this one you don't have much choice because you got no room. But if it's too far back it, it'll or too far forward, it'll actually screw up the geometry. You'll have more more movement in one direction than the other direction. I've personally screwed that up on my S800. Luckily I had enough throws where I could kind of tune it out, but I actually had to go back and fix it. I kind of found that out late in the game and um, screwed that up myself. But that's one thing to keep out, keep an eye out for. Um, as far as mounting them, usually it's, um, I mean, you could use anything, the CA glue, uh, foam safe CA glue, I should say, hot glue, whatever you got, whatever they tell you to do is usually the best thing to do. Um, but again, keep that in mind with the servo horns center of that crease the neutral position you want that that link to be sitting at and then you're good to go and then you can set it in um, your actual servo right here um, any wing that you get before you hook up your before you hook up your um, your servo links and your put your horns together all that jazz get everything plugged in what I like to do is get everything plugged in like it's ready to fly plug in your battery have your have your radio hooked up and check to see where these um, servos actually stop now if you look on this one that's kind of like the best case scenario right there where the um, uh, horn is actually 90 degrees offset from the servo sometimes and it actually happened with this one um, the, the servo horn was a tooth off so it was actually in the neutral position it was sitting like this and again that'll cause you to have um, unequal travel in either direction because the servo horns off and it's easy enough to fix just take the screw loose pop it they're actually teeth um, they're toothed like a gear pop it out and then pop it back in put the screw back in and you're good to go but only do that do that when it's powered because that way there the servo is trying to achieve neutral position while you're sitting there also make sure you don't have any trims already into your radio because if you're copying models and you're bringing them over and you got sub trims that'll screw it up so make sure everything's neutral on your radio plug it in get it there check to see that that's actually sitting there and in the nice, nice neutral position sometimes they're off a little bit these um, plastic gear servos from China they just they're, they're not accurate but they're good enough um, like this one right here these are the ones you usually get with the Chinese Chinese brand plug-and-play stuff um, they're pretty pretty garbage first time you crash one they're gonna strip out on you <coughs> um, but yeah China doesn't give a shit they just want you to buy it any anytime you get a plug and fly from like a Banggood or something like that I can almost guarantee they're going to give you these servos they do have upgrades uh, I got something small I could bring down yeah, this, this thing's a little big but 
I'll show you. Emacs makes these metal gear servo, metal gear servos. Um, these are actually 12 gram servos, but they're in the nine gram uh, form factor, which that's what this is. This is a nine gram typical servo. These are like two bucks. These are like eight or nine bucks. You get them for on a Emacs. Um, well worth the extra money. That's why I normally don't buy plug and flies from places like Banggood or something like that because the money they make up they just give you shit components it's better to build it up yourself and then you know the stuff that you got in it even if it's brand name stuff I still kind of think they're getting like the seconds like the stuff that didn't quite pass quality control and they're getting it at a cheaper price and they're just throwing it in the bag for you so you think you're getting something so I always go with this is the, actually the only bind and fly I've ever bought but it's from Hobby King it's got the cheap servos on it but I mean it was like 70 bucks out of the box shipped so I mean you can't really argue with that but if you're going for something a little bit well, on a higher end I would definitely go with your go with your own components just get the frame if you like and then build it up as you go um, is that it for servos um, yeah that's pretty much it Again, if you get one after a crash, it's always good to get the sticks and wiggle them all around. Make sure everything's moving fine. The plastic ones, like I said, they strip out real easy and it's not necessarily obvious. If you think you got one stripped out, just kind of grab, grab the, um, the uh, control surface, bend it back and forth. If there's any crunch or any skipping in it, it's fucking done. Get rid of it. It's, it's better just to replace it and be safe rather than be up in the air and all of a sudden the thing sticks up in one fucking direction and you're sitting there doing loops to the ground um, so that's it all right rates and expo um, we as quad guys know rates is something well and expo for that matter something you set up in beta flight um, for airplanes it's a little bit different you actually have to go into your radio um, of course for Tyrannus there's seven different ways of doing everything but uh, for me what I do is I'll actually come in to uh, inputs I think it is inputs and then I set up the different rates and as you go through them and then you could switch through them um, it's kind of important because you don't want to take off and land with the same the same amount of rates because when you go slower, you might want a little bit more control, which is more throw. Uh, when you go faster, you might want a little bit less throw. So you want to go down to a lower rate and that kind of smooth you out a little bit. Um, personally, I found um, with uh, um, most quads, or quads, here we go again, uh, most airplanes that um, set, set three rates up, low, medium, and high, and then have your low set to 50 set your medium up to um, 75 and your high at 100 which it'll never stay there but that gives you a really good indication as to where you need to be as you're flying and it gives you a lot of movement for if you need a bunch more or if you need a little bit less you know I mean it's real squirrely you can bank it down the lower rates and then okay it's a little bit better make a mental note and then when you land just do a little bit of adjusting in your radio I usually use about 30% Expo seems to work out pretty good for me um, uh, your experience may vary 30% um, is it's just what I've even even before I got into quads and I was kind of dabbling into a uh, line of sight fixed wings 30% just always seemed that seemed to work out for me but like I said if it feels a little squirrely even though the rates are low bump your bump your Expo up a little bit more um, you also might need less Expo at different I mean you could, you could set it up you, you guys are familiar with the Tyrannus it, it'll it'll if I can't, I mean, if you don't know how to do it, there's 20 different videos on people showing you how to do it. And um, basically what you're looking at when you've got rates going on here is, in a good view there, all right, so we got, the wing comes up like that, that's in the low rates, rate. that would be your middle rates, rate. and that's the high rates right there. And that's, you rate. kind of see the difference there. Um, what you want is, like I said, just a, a little bit between it and I usually end up not using the high rates I usually just use two rates on it uh, a low and a medium and then if I get silly I'll put it on high rates and then roll real fast and break stuff but um, that's a good place to start uh, another thing too when you're setting up a wing uh, let me give you there 
Yeah, that's good right there. Um, let me put it in high so you can exaggerate it and you really say it. Um, when you're rolling to the right, this one here goes up, that one goes down. And then when you're rolling to the left, it's the opposite. And then when you're pitching up, they both go up because that makes you go up. And then when you're going down, that goes down. Um, this is kind of important when you're setting these things up. Because <laughs> if not, you'll turn left. If it's backwards, it'll go the other direction and then you, you have bad day. Um, one thing um, to keep in mind, I've found personally, when you're plugging it in and you, you set up you set up a wing through the um, there's a little setup thing as you as you set up a new model. Uh, you select the airplane and then it asks you your motors and then it asks you all, all the different questions and you, you eventually end up with a wing. Um, what I found is you got the two the two um, aileron and elevator um, plugs in the back here. I found personally if everything's backwards, like up is down, down is up, and all that jazz, flip flip the two servo wires and that usually fixes it. If not, you actually got to go in and sometimes you have to reverse um, reverse the uh, control and it's just screw around with it. It'll eventually come right. Like I said, it's just it's kind of goofy and it's never the same for each one you build. All right, pre-flight. So you got your thing together, motor spinning the right direction, you got your prop going the right way, servos are hooked up, you got your reflex put in, you got your CG sitting there just perfect, everybody's happy. Um, before you take off, um, actually even before you leave your house to go to take off, first thing you want to do is take the camera lens and throw it away because you never want to throw a plane in the air with the camera lens on, pull your goggles down and see black because that's a bad day. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> it's not fun. Um, next, what you want to do is, as like I said, you got everything set up, everything's cool. Hold the thing in your hand, facing facing with the nose pointed towards the sky, and just kind of run the motor up. And when you're running the motor up, you kind of want it to feel like it's starting, like around half throttle is where you want it to start feeling like it's almost, it almost doesn't weigh anything. You're not holding on to it. You're kind of holding it from taking off. Around half throttle is a good, is a good indication that you got enough power going on to get you, to get you flying in the air. Um, I also like to throw my goggles on, do the same thing, hold it so, you know, the prop ain't going to cut your pecker off. Hold it away from you, put your goggles down, run it at half throttle with the goggles down, and watch your video to see if you're getting any kind of distortion or if the video's fading or anything like that. Because once it's in the air and you got the goggles on, if shit happens to your video, you're shit out of luck. I mean, I've had a couple of times where video would cut out on me because I was using garbage, and by the time you get by the time you get the goggles up. You look at the thing, you figure out which direction it's pointed in, you're just spectating as the thing hits the ground. I mean, unless you're like 900 feet in the air, and at that point you're not going to be able to fucking see it anyway. So, like I said, make sure you got you got good video. Um, a little random tip I found out. This black stripe right here, I actually added that myself. Because um, it's a white it's a white finish on this, on this wing. And what happens is the... Um, the white actually blows out the um, the uh, balance. I think I was way off. Yeah, the white actually blows out the um, the color balance or the uh, the exposure, I should say, on the wing. I mean, on the camera. And then you, you get the white here, and then you have the dark surrounding, and it just kind of blacks everything out. So you paint that black, and that actually uh, fixes the exposure on the camera. Um, what else we got? Pre-flight wise, yeah. Like again. I said, before you take off, always check your servos, make sure they're running back and forth. I always run the motor up, make sure that's good. Pull the goggles down, run the motor up, make sure, make sure every, with every video, I mean, with every flight you take, run the motor up. You never know what happened the last time you, you landed, you might have knocked something loose. And uh, sometimes these don't land too politely, so you got to, you got to keep that in mind. When uh, every time you take off, it's almost you're almost starting from new again, just to make sure. And once you get the goggles down, like I said, it's 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 go time. And if you're not ready, it's going to bite you in the ass. All right, 
Takeoffs and landings. The two scariest parts of flying a wing. Um, for me, like I said, I've only been in this about six months, so I haven't quite gotten the hang of it. I'm left-handed, so the, the technique that works good for me is I hold it about like this, and then I kind of do a do a frisbee chuck off to the side and just get it launching that way because and then of course you, you got to throttle I throttle up with my mouth put the uh, put the radio down where I'm going to hold it put my thumb on the stick and then kind of give it a hook to the side like a frisbee but don't impose any rotation in it you want to kind of throw it straight because you pose a rotation and it's, it's it's a bad day um, yeah, it's 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 kind of scary when you're launching them, especially if it's your first time. You're probably going to plan it your first time unless you're very lucky. Me personally, I usually I throw them pretty hard and I take off pretty fast, um, much to my my demise sometimes. But um, I I take I like to take off in low rates or a lower rate. I know a lot of guys who are a lot better at it than I am. They take off in high rates. My problem is is that I'm a pincher when I fly and I'm just complete corky when it comes to flying with thumbs so I mean I can get real precise when I'm pinching but when I'm flying with thumbs I'm just, I'm just moving the thing all over the place so I tend to overcorrect when I'm flying with my thumbs so I like a lower rate um, you might like a higher rate it's it's completely completely up to you like I said if you're not sure which one you're gonna like start in a middle rate and see how that works out for you um, it's just one of those things you kind of got to you kind of got to trial by fire figure it out as you're going and um, Hopefully you figure it out right the first time, but like I said these things are so these things are resilient I mean they got They're tough as beans. There's really not too much you can do to them, especially if you're flying over grass um, Another thing with taking off you always want to try and it's not always necessarily the case You always want to try to take off into the wind so you got the wind blowing in your face throw it into the wind and the airfoil doesn't know the difference between travel speed or wind coming at you flying over the airfoil you got a five mile an hour headwind you throw it 10 miles an hour the airfoil thinks it's doing 15 miles an hour it doesn't know the difference so to give yourself the best chance of getting it up in the air is getting the most wind over the wing throwing it into the wind is the best way to do it um, again what I like to do a lot of guys will tell you you need to learn to learn, learn how to fly line of sight before you get into the wings I found personally I spent most of the last summer flying learning line of sight and the last the last time I've flown line of sight was the last time I pulled my goggles down I basically take the wing I throw it into the wind get it going onto a nice pitch climbing up to the air not rolling not going anywhere where it's going to be in danger it's flying away from you so you don't have to worry about orientation because you know if you're flying towards yourself all the controls are backwards aside from up and down but your roll is backwards when it's flying towards yourself but flying away from yourself it's really easy <clears throat> so you kind of get it kind of get it on a nice a nice angle headed upwards you got good throttle you're not headed towards anything you pull the goggles down and then you're off and flying it's 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 really easy if you could fly one of these freaking things you could fly one of these easy i mean not that not that it's easy but if you got fpv down with a quad you, you could you could pick this up I, I as a line of sight fixed wing pilot i'm a beginner on a good day um flying a wing um better part of intermediate it, getting close to advanced I mean line of sight I can't fly inverted to save my balls but with a wing flying I could fly the entire field inverted with them um, with FPV so it just makes life a lot easier plus when you're flying um, FPV um, you, you, your wing sometimes you know you're making a turn and then a wind will grab you and it'll kick a wing down when you're flying line of sight you don't necessarily register that 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 tip very fast and you find yourself it's already in a bad position by the time you're ready to react to it flying FPV it tips you know it you counteract it boom you're good to go um, that's about it for takeoffs like I said it's better to learn line-of-sight flying 
but it's not necessarily going to make you better at FPV wing pilot. Like I said, it's just one of those things. And I mean, like I said, it's, it's line of sight really isn't that hard. I wouldn't learn line of sight on a wing. Um, I would more more do line of sight on something something like this, which is the uh, Micro Sky or Nano Sky Hunter actually from Ready Me. But I'll get back to this in a second. Um, yeah, so like I said, into the wind on a good angle. You got your rates in the middle. If you're not sure where you want to start it, you got about half throttle. It's it's taken off. I mean, you, you can feel it pulling in your hand. Give it a little toss into the wind. You're going up. Pull the goggles down, and you're golden. Just give it a little bit more throttle if you think you need it. The faster these fly, oddly enough, the more controllable they are. So, if you're kind of wonking around like this, give it a little bit more gas, and the thing will straighten out. Especially when you're going into turns. They like speed going into turns, and they'll, they'll at speed they'll carve just fine. But if you get them get them going a little bit slow, they kind of want to kind of want to nose into the ground a little bit. Speed your friend with fixed wing with with uh, quadcopters. We're always cutting that throttle back. Uh, you get into a trouble with with fixed wing. It's the opposite. You want to gun that throttle so you got that air going over the um, airfoil to get you out of trouble. Um, it really. Um, it's really not that bad, and it's a lot of fun to be honest with you. Even even if you're not recording on a on a on an HD camera to share to everybody. Uh, as far as flying goes, yeah, I mean, if you didn't know already, when you're flying a wing or any fixed wing, you got to roll and then pull back, and that'll give you your turn. So you roll, pull back, roll and pull back, and that gives you your turn. Um, if you're rolling and pulling back, and you start going going into the ground a little bit correct your roll back a little bit and then it'll go into it. It's 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 pretty intuitive once you get going and you're flying around. Um, your first flight I would be doing the I'm a cool guy driving flying through the flying through a tree tunnel. Um, best thing to do is just stand in the stand at the 50 yard line in a football field on the sideline, throw it into the wind and then then do your best to keep up with it. And I guarantee you, like I said, if you've been flying quads for 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 a decent amount of time and you're confident flying quads you'll be able to pick this up and like I said for landings landings are pretty easy landings again you want to land into the wind so wherever you throw it the direction you throw it to take off that's the direction you want to land on normally I'll come around and when I'm doing my final turn for landing I'll actually throw pull the throttle back to like around a quarter throttle and that and the fact that you're turning actually peels off a lot of the um, speed off of the wing and then straighten it out come flying towards your landing and then once you get about three feet off the ground completely chop the throttle kind of cruise it in and then right as you think you're about ready to touch kind of peel the nose back just a little bit like that that'll it'll stall the wing not really stalling it but it'll it'll slow the wing down enough and then it'll just kind of flop on the ground like that you'll do cartwheels and you'll nose it over and you'll do all kinds of cute shit but like I said they're pretty resilient you're not going to really break anything and if you do they're pretty easy to fix a little hot glue or a little foam tack or something of that nature <coughs> uh, CA works really good with DCPP foams um, yeah and that's it man it's just a matter of taking off getting in the air and getting the goggles down once you get the goggles down you'll figure it out make sure you, the, the key thing is to make sure you got plenty of room you need you need that extra room where you're not dodging trees you're not worrying about hitting shit you're not worried about flying over a place you don't want to fly over you just got plenty of room to get out there and fuck around figure it out for yourself you'll get comfortable with it and I guarantee you three batteries in you'll be doing stupid shit like flying upside down you're like this is fucking awesome bro but um yeah so do that Your first wing, what should it be? Uh, there's different trains of thought on that. Some people say no flight controller. Some people say flight controller. Uh, me personally, I didn't want to have to learn anything extra aside from flying the wing. So I took, um, I took this uh, guy right here. And I bought this before I even started in FPV and it was sitting on a shelf. I think it cost me 20 bucks and it's just got a whole bunch of old quad parts in it. Uh, this might not be your first, your first choice, 
but I learned this one line of sight, and I mean, I've split it here, split it here, split it here, broke the motor off, broken the aler or elevons off many a times, broken the, the um, winglets off of it. This was my first FPV um, plane. Um, like I said, it might not be your best first choice, but it, it worked for me, but I also kind of had a little bit of experience flying fixed wing before I got into it. Um, I know ready-made ready-made RC makes a um, plane called the recruit um, it's a plug-and-fly and it's got a flight controller in it so it's got a it's got a takeoff mode where you just give it throttle you put it in takeoff mode you huck the thing and it flies straight and level until you're ready to go that's actually a pretty good option I think that actually will carry a actually it does yeah it carries an action camera so you got a little slot in the front if you want to do your do your GoPro session or your or your full size GoPro. Remember what I said about CG and adding cameras and whatnot. <clears throat> um, yeah, that that's actually a viable uh, thing. I was actually looking into that. I bought the S800 instead because I wanted to build something. It probably wasn't the smartest idea. I probably should have went with the uh, Recruit because the S800 even I got I got just a kit version, so I put it together. And like I said, it's it flies. But I think the recruit for the price at, at um, eighty-five dollars, I think it is right now, it's 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 a way better value than that S eight hundred, and it's ready-made RC, and we all know ready-made RC. And if you get it, you get a turd out of the box. You don't have to worry about dealing with someone in China who doesn't give a fuck about getting your money back or or getting it fixed or or getting support on it. Ready-made RC is great with that shit. So I I would go with that if you want to go the flight controller um, mode. Um, for me. Um, second choice um, was this. Let me get this guy out of here. Um, this was the my second my second fixed wing was the Nano Sky Hunter again from Ready Made RC. Um, this isn't your traditional um, wing. It's got a tail. Um, one thing, one of my buddies, he has one of these. He showed me this little trick. This thing has a, a tendency to have wing uh, tail wag when you're flying. And he showed me just take a um, like a credit card or an old gift card, cut it in half, tape it on there, and I threw a little bit of black spray paint on it, and that actually helps out a lot for for uh, fixing the tag or the tail wag. If you got a 3D printer, I know that on Thingiverse they have um, uh, a little clip-on wings you could put on the bottom, and a buddy of mine did that, and he said it helps out a lot. So that's one thing you could look into. This is, I think this is in the $70 range right now. It's not bad at all for $70. And this thing will fly line of sight with you all freaking day. I mean, it, it, it's just a real, really, really, really docile um, airframe. I can get about um, cruising over 10 minutes of flight on a 1300 3S battery on it. It flies great. It does. It flies really, like I said, it's a real docile fly. It's light, so in the high winds it gets bumped around, but you're not carrying a GoPro on it anyway. This is kind of like the um, the bike cruiser style. Um, this FPV um, uh, canopy, I guess you'd call it, um, this actually had to buy separate. I think this is like 10 or 15 bucks from them, but with the um, with the airframe, the airframe when you buy it, they actually give you one that's just got a piece of wood plank on it, and then you got to kind of figure it out for yourself. I like this because it's just you know, it's got the mounts for the camera, which is nice. The screws in there it gives you a place to put your um, your VTX, and you just shoot the antenna out the side, or you can flip it around and shoot it up out the butt. Um, I did put one of these old school Fat Shark filters on here, a buddy gave me, and this doesn't regulate the um, voltage; it just filters it. And I was starting to get. Um, motor noise on this. I've flown this so much that I think the bearings are starting to go in a motor. And I was starting to get motor noise through my video and I put this on it and it, it fixed all my problems. And I said, that's that's um that fetch arc? Yeah it is fetch arc, yeah. And you can get this from again ready made probably sells them. Uh, get FPV probably definitely sells them. Um yeah so I said this is this is a good, if you want to go line of sight, you want to go simple, there is no flight controller in this, so you're going to be without that, but to be honest with you, you don't need it. It's real easy to toss. Um, ReadyMade has a build video for this one, and it's spot on. Um, they don't stress enough getting all this, all this uh, stuff straight and parallel, so when you're putting it together according to the video, just be a little extra careful when you're when you're putting the tail and these little these little tail booms on to make sure they're all straightened 
straight and perpendicular and all that happy horse shit. <clears throat> um, again, it's a cruiser. I guess you could probably put an action camera on the top here if you wanted to figure something out, but it's not really made for that. Like I said, it's just, it's fun. It, it flies good. It does everything decent. It'll fly upside down as good as it flies right side up. You could slow it down to like 10 miles an hour, and if you really, you really shove the stick forward, you can probably get better part of 40, maybe push it 50 if you got a good tailwind. But like I said, it's a, it's a docile flyer. And like, if you're not interested in the flight controller, um, uh, which we call it a, a route, this is this is a good a good second um, a good a uh, good option for you. But like I said, that, I would start on something like this or the recruit with the flight controller if it's your first your first time trying FPV fixed wing. Something like. Uh, Something like this, the learning curve is going to be a little higher if you've never flown, if you've never flown fixed wing before. So, <laughs> um, I've never personally flown a recruit, but I know a lot of people who have, and I've watched a lot of reviews, and it looks like they're pretty good. Um, that's about it. Um, they do have some cool stuff coming around. INAV from um, uh, what you call it? They're, it's a it's a branch of Beta Flight. They've been doing a lot of cool stuff with flight controllers. I'm thinking about maybe looking into one. I got one at another um, another wing, 900 millimeter wing that I think I might put a flight controller in because it's got a nice bay for it. <laughs> just to, just for something to play with. Like I said, you don't necessarily need it, but it's just something something cool to screw around with. Um, yeah. So like I said, uh, painless RC. Uh, guy from the guy from the UK. He seems like, in my world at least, he seems like he's the guy who's doing the most as far as explanation. He's like the Josh Bardwell of uh, of uh, of uh, INAV, and uh, like I said, he gets he gets pretty in, in depth on it as far as explaining how to hook everything up and how everything works. But um, like I said, it's not something I got into. I, when I start something new, I kind of like to keep the amount of things I need to learn to a minimum, so that way there I'm not. <clears throat> screwing up one thing and blaming it onto another thing you know what i mean you throw a wing in the air and it flies like shit well is it the flight controller or is it the way i set the wing up take the flight controller out of the out of the equation well then yeah i set the wing up screwed up so like i said you kind of try to minimize things i think at some point in time probably this summer i'm going to get a um a tbrc or a swept wing or a defiant wing i think is the newest guy out on the block which is a EPP type foam like this, but it's got its sparring you got to put through and you got to do coverings on it. And I hear that that's actually like the best way to fly these things. It makes them real tough, makes them real rigid so they fly nice and smooth. And uh, it's something that's actually the next step because I mean, so far, you know, I've been pretty much playing with toys. If, <laughs> not, not that everything we play with is in toys, but like I said, I've been kind of on the. On the, on the uh, the uh, lower end of things. I'd like to get something that's proper built and like I said, I've never laminated it before so that's, that'll be an adventure in and of itself. Maybe I'll make another video on that. Um, but yeah, so do it. It's fun. Quads are great. I know everyone wants stuff that they could share on the internet but guess what? You're probably not going to be the next the next um, uh, FPV YouTube sensation so uh, you might as well have fun get something cool I suggest you at least get one throw it in the air don't spend too much money on it get it flying around and if it crashes well, what are you out of nothing if uh, it doesn't crash and you're flying around and you're having a good time well then like I said I take that that little bonsai that I had the little orange one I fly the balls off of that thing and I've never landed it and not been smiling at the end of it because like I said it just goes where you put it you launch it Get your goggles down, throw it on high throttle, put it in middle race, and then just fucking beat the balls off of the thing until until the battery runs dead, and then you come in and land it. It's 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 a blast, and I highly suggest it. So anyway, any questions? Drop them down into the uh, <coughs> drop them down to the doogly doo, and uh, if I can, I'll answer it. If not, I'll direct you to someone who probably can. Um, like I said, this isn't the end all be all. This is just shit that I figured out in my little adventure into um, FPV wings and fixed wing for that matter so like I said it got me flying a couple about a half a dozen times so like I said it should help you out and um, I'm uh, and that's it so go fuck yourself later